actually a clinic to, to, to say that, yes, we are sick, but you are sick in a different way. And for each item in which we are affected, developing countries should be examining the policy options available to them at the national level and choose the appropriate policy. But we will find that for many countries, national policy alone is insufficient, especially if the country has a low population. You cannot switch from exports to the boosting of domestic demand because there is very limited domestic demand if your population is small. And therefore, the need for regional cooperation and regional markets, as well as South-South cooperation, even as there is a vacuum uh, coming from a decline in consumer spending in the developed world. The South Centre views these two issues, that is, the reform of the international architecture and the needs to counter the recession from the perspective of the problems and interests of the developing countries. There's so much written about the G20 and the international architecture. The perspective that we take, because this is the mandate of the South Center, is what is it that is interesting and urgent for the developing countries and is in our interest as we approach what is going to happen at the G20 and what is going to happen in the June summit in the United Nations. The priorities for the South include the following. The need to establish an international system that encourages financial stability. Secondly, that developing countries have enough financial resources that are stable and predictable. Even as now, what we are now seeing is a decline in financial flows. Thirdly, we need a system that avoids financial and debt crisis. And if the crisis occurs, that we manage this crisis properly. Fourthly, that we continue to have access to markets in trade. Fifthly, how do we avoid the collateral damage from policies taken by developed countries as they tackle their crisis? And finally, formulating policies in the short and in the long run for recovery and development. And very importantly, to be able to maintain and expand the policy space so that we can implement the policies that are appropriate. In view of this framework that I have outlined, or the principles that I have outlined, there is a need to review the international financial systems to ensure that the problems that led to the crisis are not repeated the next time around, but are prevented instead. There are dangers that some crisis measures taken by the developed countries may have adverse effects on the developing countries. And therefore, there is a need to prevent or offset such actions. For example, the agricultural subsidies of the developed countries used to be focused upon as the main distortion in world trade. But now, this is dwarfed, made small, in comparison to the trillions of dollars of bailouts to the financial sector and billions of dollars to the manufacturing sector, for example, the auto industry. As the developing countries do not have the funds to match these subsidies, they should be allowed to have measures to prevent the subsidized banks and insurance companies and motor car industries from coming in and taking over or overwhelming the markets of the developing countries. In the area of tariffs, developing countries should be allowed to exercise their right to use the policy space to raise their applied tariff it is if it is below the bound tariff. What I understand is that the G20 decided in Washington to have a moratorium on protectionism in terms of tariffs. And although that sounds nice, it is not fair on the developing countries because many developing countries autonomously reduce their tariff. They have a bound tariff of 100%, they reduce it to 10%. It is their right to raise from 10% to 30 or 40, especially during the crisis. Under the WTO rules, it is their right to use the policy space. If we say there's a moratorium, then they have to stick to 10%, even as subsidized products come into their country uh, through, uh, through, through, through the import channel. The developed countries, on the other hand, most of them have applied and bound tariffs, which are the same rate. So they cannot raise their, their, their applied tariffs anyway. So to say that we, 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 we don't increase our applied tariffs would actually be 
unfairly limiting the space of the developing uh, countries. Uh, another point is that the assets of the developing countries that are located in the developed world should be protected. This is the point I think that the Chinese Prime Minister made a few days ago in relation to Chinese financial assets in the United States. There are pressures, for example, from interest groups in the United States to exclude the assets or loans from developing countries from the bailout plan. You would have seen this in the newspapers, the suggestion that the AIG should only honor claims coming from nationally owned institutions. So this kind of, of, of financial protectionism should be resisted. And new forms of trade protection that affect developing countries should also not be introduced. For example, the, the fiscal stimulus program with the Buy American Clause affects mainly the developing countries because developed countries that are members of the plurilateral agreement in the WTO on government procurement are exempted from this. My paper also warns about a new protection of a trade uh, protectionist clause within, uh, within climate uh, action plans. Uh, another point is that the developing countries would like to establish international measures to foster financial stability and avoid activities that are driven by speculation. This means that there should be international regulation preventing the cross-border flow of speculative capital. And this is a major issue that should be addressed uh, in the new international architecture. If that architecture does not come about yet, then at least the developing countries should be allowed to take national policies to regulate the inflow and outflow of capital. In other words, capital controls and regulation. However, the developing countries are hindered by two things. One is IMF World Bank conditionality that mandates an open capital account. And secondly, more dangerous, many North-South free trade agreements have many chapters and provisions that prevent or limit the ability of developing countries to regulate capital flows. Okay? Okay. Uh, another point is the reform of the IMF. The IMF policies uh, in the past that call for an open capital account system, pro-cyclical monetary and fiscal policies that have magnified recessionary conditions, and trade policies linked to extreme liberalization have to be changed. We have looked at uh, the most recent nine loans that the IMF gave to crisis uh, countries in the last few months, and we found that uh, the monetary and fiscal policies linked to those loans are contractionary as they were previously. So the IMF conditions in these two areas, at least, fis fiscal and monetary policy uh, has not changed. And finally, I know, Mr. Chairman, if you can give me 30 seconds, uh, we need to set up a multilateral fund. This is something that has been proposed by many previous speakers to make up for the shortfall that the developing countries are now going to face. This fund will have to be major. The World Bank estimate just now that you heard that the shortfall may be anything between 300 to 700 billion dollars a year. We need to set up a fund that matches this kind of a gap. It may sound very big, but this is what uh, is required. We need a new international system of debt standstill and debt workout, especially since we are forecasting a new round of external debt problems. So an international system that helps countries before they fall into debt default with a standstill and with a debt workout that Ung Tat had proposed many years ago and the IMF itself was trying to work out a system like that but has uh, had no conclusions. And finally, an international cooperation system to resolve the commodity issues that have now uh, come back to haunt us, and a governance system within the United Nations, either through ECOSOC or an executive council of ECOSOC, so that the United Nations can play its pro proper leadership role in the international uh, economic system and in resolving this crisis, and this process itself, leading to the June summit, is a very important process which the South Centre hopes to contribute towards. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Martin. Sorry, 